Hey guys, it's Bradley Bush. Here's another video on logarithms. Here's our to-do list today. So uh, we'll have a brief intro to logarithms. I have a longer video on logarithms. If you wanna watch that longer video, um, you can, it's in my algebra playlist. We'll have uh, some discussion and some examples on how to change logarithms um, into their exponential forms. So we'll change between log and exponential form, and we'll discuss how to evaluate logs at the end. So let's start. So our definition of our logarithms, we just need to remember um, x, the variable here in our definition, which is also here. And there, x is greater than zero. And for our log portion, it's the input. And our base, which is here, the b has to be positive, but it cannot be equal to zero. Excuse me, it cannot be equal to one. So really what we're looking at is uh, this definition here. That is a logarithm. Log base b, base the base b can be anything. Uh, you've probably talked about exponential functions if you're looking at logarithms because generally exponential functions come before logarithms in algebra classes. If you've talked about exponential functions, you've talked about a base. So this base b is a similar idea. It's uh, This is a log base b of x. You plug an x in to the logarithm here and out pops the output, which is the y in the log form. And the y, just as an FYI, this y, which is the result of the logarithm, the output of the logarithm is actually an exponent. When you change to exponential form. So notice that y and the y over to the right they're the same way. So the output of the logarithm is the input of the exponential. And the same thing happens for the x. The in x, which is the input, again right here, of the logarithm is the output of the exponential. So there are two forms, logarithmic form and exponential form. They're equivalent. They both have base b but the x's and y's are swapped as far as input and output. So there's your brief explanation of a logarithm. Let's talk about how to switch between exponential and logarithmic form. These, this is a really useful task if you are um, doing algebra, meaning if you're algebra, algebraically manipulating your logarithm or your exponential, because sometimes you have an equation or um, an expression that you want to change from whatever form it is into something that's equivalent. So maybe you have a log and you want it to be an exponential form. So this is how we do it. We need to remember first off this equivalency because that's what we're going to use. We're going to recognize the x, the base, and the y, and will transform them according to this equivalency here underlined in yellow. So let's look at our first one. Whoops. Let's look at our first one. So um, what is the base? Base is five. Let's mark this. The base is five. Um, the x we want, so the base, we notice, we'll write the base. So we've got a five for the base, and we're gonna be following 
And by the way, we're going to be following this form right here. So the base to some y equals x. So um, over here, where is the y? The y is the part to the left that the log is equal to. In our case, our y is 2. This is the, I'm going to put y. So this comes up. and is put into the exponent. And the x, remember the x and y are switched in exponential. So we took the x and the y, and we're going to switch them. This equals, uh, what is the x? Where is the x? Here is the x. Or the input. There's the input. And the input's going to become the output. So that gives us x equals 5 squared. What's 5 squared? 25. Perfect. So x equals 25. So we just um, found out what x was. We solved for x without having to do anything crazy. We just used the definition of a logarithm and its equivalency with an exponential, and that's how we solved for x. x is 25. Let's do the same thing. Um, remember, we start with uh, what is the base? The base here is just b, so it's a little weird, but it's okay. We can still handle it. We're just going to keep that same base. And now we have two parts, right? We have the input and the output. So we're going to switch them. The output over here is 3, so that's going to be the input. I just erased something. There we go. So 3 is red. Here's the input, or sorry, the output, which is going to be our new input. So b cubed equals, here's the input. It now becomes the output 64. So the exponential version of this is b cubed equals 64. Done. How about our last one? Again. What is the base? Here we have a base 3. So as we are converting it, our base is going to be 3. And uh, we're going to switch the input and the output. So the input of the log is... What color am I looking for? There we go. Here, this is the input, or the, the x in our scenario. And this is going to be the output. Now I need to put an equal sign. And we also have an exponent up here, which that is where the y comes in. So. In exponential form, this logarithm can be written as 3 to the y equals 7. And we're done. So it really isn't tough. We just need to remember the equivalency here at the top. Um, y equals log, b ba log base b of x is equivalent to e b to the y equals x. That literally just tells us how to convert. So let's go the other direction. We converted from logs to exponentials. Now let's go from exponentials to logs. And again, we're still going to be using this same equivalency up at the top of the screen. So let's start with our base. 
Well, we know. We know that this is going to be log base something, right? Log base question mark of question mark equals question mark. We have three question marks here, and those three question marks have got to be filled with this, this, or that. And we just look at our equivalency at the top of the screen to tell us what goes where. So the base, this is the base, right? The base is going to go here in the bottom, just like a base for a log always appears there. I don't like that 12. Let's rewrite that. That's a little better. All right. What happens now? Um, our exponent we know the exponent we can see the exponent up here in the exponential is the same thing as the output in the log so that's where we're gonna put it output of the log is 2 and we can also see that the result of the exponential is the input of the log. So the input here is going to be x. So there we go the logarithmic form of this exponential in exercise a here is log base 12 of x equals 2 done move on to the next one b is my base again didn't mean for my content library to come up Here's my base. So as we are writing it out, log base B, I want B to be blue, of 27 equals. Once you do a few of these, they start to be a lot easier because you see the pattern and it isn't unfamiliar to you anymore. So this exponential, b cubed equals 27, can be rewritten in a logarithmic form as log base b of 27 equals 3. Done. Our final one. Um, e, that's our base again. So we have log base E of nine equals y. So logarithmic form of this is log base e of 9 equals y. And just as a side note, I'm going to write this here in blue. Log base e of x can be written ln of x. They actually have a special um, symbol for log base e of x. So we really could rewrite this as ln of 9 equals y. That is more, um, it's better notation, I should say. 
But for illustration purposes, I wrote log base E so you can see where I was putting the E. All right, so we have finished our definition. We've finished our transforming from logarithmic to exponential. And now we just have to discuss how in the world do we evaluate a logarithm. And good, the good news is it's actually super easy. Evaluating logarithms is much, much easier than you would expect. So let me tell you why. First of all, let's change this logarithm. So we're going to start with uh, exercise A here. Let's change this log into its equivalent exponential form. So we have base 2. And the 16 is the input for the log. That means it's going to be the output for our exponential. And the result of this, we'll move the arrow over a little bit. The result of this is, well, we don't know what it is, right? That's what we're trying to find. And the result for the log is the the output for the log is the input for the exponential. So really, this is this is asking us a question. This is asking us two to the what power equals sixteen. And I bet most of you could come up with the answer. Two to what power gives me sixteen? Most of you are thinking it's four. And you're right. 2 to the 4th power gives me 16. So log base 2 of 16 equals 4. So the result here, the result of this logarithm is 4, which is the exponent here that we see. So when you're computing a logarithm, oftentimes you can compute it just off the top of your head by thinking 2 to what power gives me 16. So let's try that for B. Seven to what power gives me one over 49? So I know you're thinking um, that is not anywhere close to being easy. So really the question I'm asking you is seven to what power gives me 1 over 49. Well, it's not as hard as you think, because you probably could tell me this. 7 to what power gives me 49? You probably are all like, uh, 2. 7 squared gives me 49. So I found the 49 part. That's not an issue. How do I take the reciprocal? What exponent property flips a fraction? Negatives, right? If I have 7 to the negative 1, that's really 1 over 7. So if I have 7 to the negative 2, that's really 1 over 7 squared. And what's 7 squared? 49. We just found our answer. The answer is negative 2. 7 to the negative 2 power gives us 1 over 49. So let's put that there. 7 to the negative 2 gives us 1 over 49. Perfect. So you see the result of a logarithm really is an exponent. 
I know some of you didn't believe me at first when I said that at the start of the video, but it's uh, it's true. It's actually very true. All right, let's do our next one. Let's do C. So we're looking at 25 to what power gives me 5. So I've picked four different types of problems here, hoping that I would catch a large range of problems that you might see in homework or um, in a book you're looking at. So all of these are a little bit different, but they all use the same idea that's based to what power gives me the result here. So 25, maybe I should make that a different color. 25 to what power gives me five. Um, how do you make something smaller with a power? Well, 25 to the first power, that's just 25. 25 to the second power, that's something big. 625 maybe? I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> or judge my arithmetic if that's not right. It's something bigger than 25, right? That's my point. So we'd have to put something, we'd have to put give it an exponent of something between 0 and um, 1. Or in other words, what if we did a fraction? A fraction. Now, I don't know if you remember this beautiful little formula here. It's a rule for converting between radicals and fractional exponents. Notice that the letter there, A, is the index. So if you had a square root, what's the square root of 25? I think you're thinking what I'm thinking. The square root of 25 is 5, right? The square root of 25 is 5. So how do we change that radical into a fractional exponent? Well, we use our beautiful formula here. And we say radical 25 is the same thing as 25 to the 1 half. So the exponent we're looking for is 1 half. So 25 to the 1 half power gives us 5. So this equals 1 half. All right, our last one. 2 to the what power gives us, yikes, something crazy here. So our last one, I tried to make it as, as crazy as I could. And you're thinking, yeah, you, you succeeded, which is wonderful. You know, I, I aim to succeed. I aim to please. So 2 to what power gives me 5th root of 2. So that's really hard to understand until we again use this awesome equivalency here and change that radical into an exponent. And then it becomes like ridiculously easy. 2 to the what power gives me, let's change this, so 2 to the one-fifth power. So what does my exponent have to be? What does my two exponent have to be here to equal two to the one-fifth? And then you're like, uh, it's obvious. It's obvious. It has to be one-fifth. So there we go. We found our answer. Log base two of this fifth root of two is one-fifth. That's it. Hopefully I've demystified logarithms a little bit for you and you've learned how to switch back and forth between exponential and logarithmic form and you have learned how to evaluate logarithms without using a calculator. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.